as an elected official, uh, and I didn't expect to ever be in politics. I got into it, Steve knows, I was part of Rotary and became part of uh, leadership in that and got, hey, you should do something in politics. Did something for a planning commission, and next thing you know, somebody left the board and said, would you run? And I go, no. And I ended up running and uh, been elected. And I was on the board for three years when the county board chairman for 18 years lost his election. My phone went off the next day. Would you think about being chair? I said, no, again, my phone kept on going. I had different meetings and I became chairman of the county board. I'm in my third term, so my sixth year, and I'm very proud. What I'm glad to say within the county of Waukesha, within the city of Waukesha, is seeing this, citizen action. There are some things that happen within the county, uh, within our municipalities, that never, the citizens never give us input. So it's always great to see this, to see citizens come in, be involved, get their questions out, and keep on going. And I encourage you to keep on going on this. Within this county, I was going to get up and say, basically, it's pretty hot out there. Now, you may not think it's really hot outside, but one of the meetings I had this afternoon with our county executive, Paul Farrell, we talked about what's going on. Uh, we do this on a regular basis. Uh, this is great to see that the city of Waukesha, and we know they want to talk with other communities in the county if the city of Waukesha doesn't want them uh, to locate here. They are one of many, many, organizations that want to locate here in Waukesha County. We are a hot commodity right now. We're in the right location, the right time. Economically, we are positioned in a way that few other of the 3,300 counties in the United States are. We also outperform them in so many ways that the National Association of Counties rates us in the top one half of 1% of all counties in the United States. Now we don't take that lightly. We look at it from a standpoint of why? How do we make it better? What do we have to do? Waukesha County, we were approached last year by Washington County as far as would we want to work together? They even were talking about merging government, which we said, you want to become a part of Waukesha County? Well, and Waukesha County be the county seat so long as what's been. It didn't go over really well, but what we do have is we have and we are working on several relationships, <coughs> several areas where we can work together to reduce expenses to perform and give the same services to all the citizens of the area. Like Larry talked about, Jefferson County approaches on libraries. We said, sure, and let's work together. And we have now a stronger library system. And to the, what the principal said, one of the things we find in terms of economic development, why we are a hot area is because of our literacy rate. And yes, I'm the same as you. I come out of you know, economics, but I would have to say literacy is very important, especially first to third grade. Because you can't do the math <coughs> question if you can't read the math question. And there's sometimes when I have county board supervisors, <coughs> did you read that? And did you retain it? Did you understand it? Because it's very important. So when we look at what we look at for development, I'm gonna go over a few numbers just to give you some of the economics of where we are and who we are. Believe it or not, this, I usually get more of this resistance in the western part of the county than this part of the county. But when I talk about the size of Waukesha County, some people are a little disconcerted but it's one of the reasons why we are a hot commodity. <coughs> As of the 1st of January 17, we were 398,236,000 ,236 people in Waukesha County. That's one, over a year ago. With our growth rate, we know now we have surpassed 400,000 people in Waukesha County. We have one of the highest rates of growth. Dane County beats us but we are one of the faster growing counties. We do have, and, and our demographics bear out, one of the challenges we have and what we're concerned about is the highest growth rate in our county is people above 65. 
And that concerns us, it concerns me as a county board chair, it concerns <coughs> me as a supervisor because people of that age need more services. They utilize a lot of county services. Our Health and Human Service Department is braced for that. I call it the silver tsunami. Our hope is <laughs> that we don't get overwhelmed by the tsunami, that we can actually anticipate it and make it work for us. That means, and Carroll, Carroll University is doing a great job of this, WCTC is doing a great job of this, our schools now, we need to turn out more people that are capable of doing in-home nursing and helping us keep people in their homes longer because that keeps citizens healthier. Those citizens are more involved, like you, in your community. The more things that we have where citizens are involved in their community, where they're out at night, where they're talking to their neighbors, where they're involved in making decisions. Chief Jack will tell you this, and we bear this out. Sheriff Everson will tell you this. Severson, I mean, this shows out every time. When we have more community involvement, more people that are out at night and know their neighbors, we have safer communities. We have people that are concerned about their neighbors. They're concerned about kids that suddenly <coughs> might start working, looking, talking, funny. Did they get on drugs? Whatever happened? You know, what Laura said is one of the challenges we have uh, in terms of what services can we continue to give. We are strained as a county budget because we are capped as well. We have a lot of people that want us to do, build more roads. Folks, I can tell you that our infrastructure is a challenge to us because you've all read about it, our transportation money isn't exactly being you know, heaved on us from Madison. So we need to be smart about it, and we work on that. But it is an essential part of economic development, so we are very concerned about what we do with that. Besides our population, our overall equalized property values continue to go up at an exponential rate. Our, our property value, a lot of people have a difficult time, is over 54 billion, 158 million, 131,000. It wasn't that long ago that the entire, I think the county, when you look at it from the last 20 years, we didn't even meet, we didn't meet anywhere close to 20 billion. So we're at 54 billion dollars. That's a very fast rise in equalized value. It's a good thing if you own a home, it's a good thing if you own a business, it's a good thing if you own a property. We also have the second highest medium income level in the state, which also makes us a target for businesses that want to develop here. We have the third highest equalized property value, and the county covers 560, 570, I get this all the time, I don't know why, 576 square miles, that's a lot of miles. We have the largest amount of county road services of any county in the state, which means we have a burden in terms of taking care of those roads, maintenance, snow plowing, signage, and in this, in this county, what we call culverts, making sure water goes in the right area. And when those culverts start breaking down, we have one that they showed us it was rusting away. And these things cost, can cost thousands and thousands of dollars to replace. And I can tell you that one of the things I don't ever want to see as Waukesha County Chairman is a giant sinkhole in Waukesha County on Capitol Drive where suddenly five cars just go away. Because that's what happens. These culverts are large. So, and this happens all over, not just uh, here, uh, because we do have a lot of water flowing through the city of Waukesha. Our budget increase is a relatively modest budget increase when you consider our size, our growth, and our equalized value. Again, it's capped, but we don't even come anywhere close to what the state would allow us as a county to raise our revenue to. We work things very, very fiscally conservative. We do things at the county. We just had a presentation this morning on lean government. We've had this going for eight years where our people that work for the county are doing things and looking at every way they can reduce costs, every which way. I come out of the business community. I don't know how many people here come out of business, whoever did anything with lean, okay? I practiced lean, did a lot of work with lean. 
I worked in Japan, I worked in Asia, I did a lot of training with people as far as organizational capability. We do the same thing. Even though it might sound like an oxymoron, we practice lean government. Our amount of counties per population is one of the lowest in the state and one of the lowest in the country. So we do run very lean. I will tell you a few trends we're concerned about. As I said, the silver tsunami. The other thing is what are some of the federal and state budgets? What are their policies? 46% of our current budget, $293 million, 46% is unfunded mandates. That's either the states or the feds saying, because the county, we're the backup. I always call the county government, we're basically the offensive linemen of government. Most people don't know who their county board supervisor is, as Larry said, they don't even know what the county does. And unless we do something really wrong and get a flag for it, they don't even know we're there. <laughs> In other parts of government, they score, they get all the glory. Of, oh, geez, you guys plow the roads, good for you. And uh, that's it. So people don't realize that, but at 46% of our learned current budget being unfunded mandates, we're expected that everybody that needs health and human services, everybody that needs mental health, that they get taken care of. We can't close our jail down just because, well, we can't afford it. The sheriff will tell you that. He tells me that about every other week. So one of the challenges is, is that we have to come up with ways to make sure the citizens are served and be creative in how the money gets there. And we've become very creative in doing it. We also are the lowest borrowing, for our size, one of the lowest borrowing uh, counties in the state. And we borrow because we're AAA bond rated at a very, very nice interest rate. Our latest bond issue of $10 million, which is very low. I mean, there are cities much smaller than we are, counties much smaller than we are, borrowing a lot more money. We borrow at 1.6%. And when our bonds come up, there are a lot of people competing we get to reduce our long-term bonds even by more because our bonds are very well rated and very well uh, working. One of our challenges is, and Chief Jack will back me up on this, but uh, the type of people that are being arrested in our jail right now, and Laura talked about this, their costs, the costs of being in our jail are going up because our medical costs for these people are going up. Their mental health issues, the heroin, the drug issues that they have, uh, we have several people that are coming in, getting into our jail, they need dialysis. I didn't think the Watchtower County Jail would ever be a hospital ward, but it is. And it's become costly. So we are looking at that. Our dispatch center also is a well-run center and saves several communities a lot of money. Now the nice thing is having one of the educators here is for a couple of years we were actually dipping throughout the county in school enrollment. But we're now having more young people, families, we're trying to do everything we can to help people move here, and our school enrollment throughout the county is going back up. This is good, because we've already built the buildings, we want to utilize the buildings, and we need young people in our communities. So the other thing that I wanted to talk about is a big part of economic development that we work on, as you all know, is our regional development. Uh, we started uh, a couple of years ago when I was first on the board, Dan Varex and I looked at how the county economic development uh, apparatus was working. We dissolved it, started all over again. What we have now is a center for growth. They are providing us fast, more updated statistics. One of the things they did is they surveyed throughout just Waukesha County, over 72% of our businesses want to expand their businesses here. Now the great thing about Waukesha County is, we are, in terms of percentage of jobs that we have in this county, or 22% are in manufacturing. That's a higher ratio than most counties in this state, and it's a higher ratio than all the two counties in the country. If you add construction jobs, and anybody that's driven around sees cranes and everything else, the amount of construction jobs going on in this state and, and in this county, over 26% of the people in this county work in either manufacturing or construction. And those are family sustaining wage jobs. So those jobs help better families 
and we want to do everything to encourage that type of business. When the M7 was wooing Plotska, one of the things they utilized was they looked at who makes what in terms of what Foxconn wanted in terms of supply chain. The reason Wisconsin was chosen was you yes, ask people like the incentive plan, okay, they'll talk about that. But water, our technical education system, and the fact that they had access to a supply chain that was within a relatively small area to get them. They used Oshkosh truck as an example. And I was at one of the first presentations in Oshkosh truck, they put up the map and they showed who all supplies Oshkosh truck. The Department of Defense really liked the fact that when they were talking about competing with Lockheed Martin, why Oshkosh truck? Oshkosh truck had all their supply chain about 85% within 100 miles. These component manufacturers do their own engineering, do their own development and prototyping. So if something happens worldwide that has to make a change, when you have that kind of engineering capacity outside of your company, close by, you can make changes faster, more efficiently, and more creatively. So that was a big plus. And they showed the dots of all those manufacturing, small manufacturing companies supplying Oshkosh truck, and they had dots by county. You couldn't see anything within Waukesha County. We had more dots than any other county in the state and anything around. We have a lot of those component manufacturers right here. We are doing everything we can to make sure they continue to grow. We have several challenges when it comes to that. I've talked with Kevin about this, Mayor Riley, the Alderman. One of the big ones is, in this county, housing. It's a real challenge for us. I was very glad when they were working with Habitat for Humanity and redeveloping whole areas so that families can come in and own a home. We also know in trying to, the, the governor has put forth $6.8 <coughs> million to attract and retain what? Anybody know? Young people. They want to get people here because the state needs them in order for us to continue to grow. We've got to spread our population out. We've got to train them better. We've got to educate them for the jobs of today and the jobs of tomorrow. And I will tell you this, the jobs of tomorrow, regardless of what we think or don't like, that most of these machine shops that you see here are running on automated machines. So at some point, these young people have to learn coding and programming <coughs> if they want those high paying jobs. So I know there's a lot of people that, oh, you know, technology. Well, the jobs of today and the jobs of tomorrow that pay really well are technologically based. So is healthcare, GIS systems, everything we do is technologically based and going to be even more so. So at some point they're going to have to learn coding and programming. We're glad and hope that they start doing it in the grade school. Absolutely. And when they have, if they're a Java programmer by the time they're juniors, they've been getting jobs and internships that pay very nicely. And they move right into nice careers. So the housing piece is going to be, and the other infrastructure piece is our transportation and transit infrastructure. And we're part of that, we're trying to walk, work regionally, strategically to make sure that we have the ability to not get all, as we continue to grow, get too clogged up, and that we can make sure that people can move safely and efficiently around the region. It's not easy. Uh, so we have to be smart about that. I also wanted to, I think, just hit one more thing, and that is, when we look at the other challenges, how do we make sure that we diversify our housing, diversify our transportation and transit options, and make sure that we're a welcoming, open community to young people and families? And recreation is a big part of it. So even though it's tough to follow you guys, I have to say that you know, recreation in all of its forms, better parks, uh, yes, we want to preserve the flowers, but we also want to have the walking pass, the bike pass, uh, the connectivity. We need to continue to do that, and that takes us all working together. As I said, with the county, we work with every municipality in the, in the, in the county and every county surrounding us. We have over 100 different memorandums or uh, 
organizations that we work with that are government related. And all of those reduce costs and reduce our ability to, uh, and increase our ability to provide services and better uh, help for the citizens, both from a, uh, hopefully a medical standpoint, but also from a recreational standpoint. Anything else we can do. So those are some of the things as we, uh, as we work. I think the other challenge that we have an issue with, <laughs> we being told to get off the stage. <laughs> is uh, one of the things I'm heavily involved in is workforce development. And that's why I know those statistics as far as why technology is so important. When we talked about job skills, the people that we want to get reemployed that are 30, 40, 50, uh, some of our veterans, we're finding that if we can train them technically, we can get good jobs for them. Family sustaining jobs. And I will say this as far as, uh, we had a meeting today on opiates, opioids and all those challenges. When young people, when they're coming through grade school, middle school especially, because we have to get them that young, if they have hope for the future, if they understand that there is life out in front of them, they're less susceptible to the, uh, Chief Jack said it best, to the, somebody goes, hey, come on, want a party? Uh, because if they're on a robotic team, if they're on a pro, uh, now I, I was just at a girls at code, for fifth grade girls, they started their own club and now they have a, a great thing going. And they all want to become engineers or work, and they are just, motivated and they were talking about it. they were the typical girls I don't like math now they love it they understand it they know where to go they've learned to articulate it they all had to present to us with Ms. Lombardi and listening to them present they presented eloquently and they were very sharp because the teachers know that you got to do more than just let them learn the, it's not learning it's the, these things the the phones and the iPads those are tools. It's like if you gave somebody, you know, anybody take tech, uh, you know, when you were in, a, in school, you know, if they, would have, if they would have given you the saw when you were taking uh, vocational ed, right, and said, and then walked away, that's, that's as irresponsible as giving somebody an iPad and not understanding what they're doing. Because the parents and the teachers have to understand what young people can do on that. So those are all the things that we work with. It's a broad scope. Uh, but we try to do it well here in Waukesha County. We work with all of our communities. We love working with the city of Waukesha because we know the city has a lot of prosperity ahead of it. They have a lot of opportunities in front of them. There are going to be changes. I can't get up here as an elected official and be honest without saying, if you're not ready for change, you haven't seen anything yet. And what we see in terms of regional economic development, boy, you know, fasten your seat belts. But be ready. It's going to change. It has to change. When you're growing at 400,000 as fast as we are and in a growing area, it's part of what we want to do. But economically, it's good for all of us. No questions for Paul? I, I have a comment, Paul, and, and I want to commend you and your board for your philosophy on taxation. <laughs> and in 2015, in the town, and I don't know if people know, but in the town government, the electorate actually uh, sets the levy. And, and so I was at the meeting, I made a motion to set the levy at the previous year, and Brian Fisher, our supervisor, stated unequivocally that his, uh, as a matter of principle, he believed in taxing the maximum amount by law. And, I understood his reasoning because in the subsequent year, you're starting from where you were the year before. So if you don't tax the maximum in the current year, you're set back. And what I see in the county is that opposite of that thinking. And you don't set your budget by how much I can get and then divvy it up. You say, how little can I spend to do the job? And then assess that amount, and I'm very proud of you for for following. Well, thank you. I, I, I know the members, and I would be remiss. <clears throat> members of our finance committee, they work a lot of extra hours. Uh, we literally walk work all summer long. Myself, the finance committee, we meet with the executive, the executive team, the department heads. They present to us. We talk about it. A lot of negotiation behind closed doors. I mean, the one thing Larry will tell you, I have a victim at the county board. 
and that is that you will understand the difference between facts, feelings, and opinions. And at this county, as long as you want to elect me chair, we're not going to make policy on my opinion, your opinion, and certainly not your feelings. But we'll have the facts, we'll have the numbers, and we'll do the best for everybody that we possibly can. And that's our job. And so what happens is, we don't always have to you know, max up. If we can run on this, we run on this. And we actually reward people on the ability to come in under a budget. It's kind of a funny thing that works, but when we do that, it's amazing. It can happen. Thank you. So. Yes. Um, I wish Kevin was in here for this one, but it's, uh, is, is there, with the lean government thing, which I love the idea of, is there any movement on conversations that uh, City Hall and uh, the county <laughs> have the, um, are you listening at, were you listening at my wall uh, today? Um, yeah, I don't want to say anything, you know, too much, uh, but yes. Uh, this started, we started talking about this a couple years ago. It's been revitalized because quite honestly, I raised a question regarding the cost of our redo of our county courthouse. Uh, and we looked at the space we have and uh, Joe's here, Ryan's here. I'm always talking to them about, hey, how can we work together? What can we do? And so we're looking at, is there other ways that we can work together? Uh, and I know we've worked really well between our, our sheriffs and the police chief regarding uh, surveillance and what's the, uh, the uh, There's 29 different things you work yeah, together on. The, uh, <laughs> I want to say it's, it's the, uh, uh, the digital piece that we would we work, and we really cut costs for both parties that way. And we're, so we are open and we are going to be, uh, if there's space, we're not that far away, how can we utilize space as best as we possibly can? Yes. Just one thing, I was mayor for eight years and I was so happy that Waukesha County facilities could be located in the city of Waukesha because we plowed every street for you guys to come in. And to also share the idea of any kind of working together. But I think a lot of people don't understand Waukesha City is the mother city of the county. We have every social economic kind of citizen living in this community. And a lot of you here tonight may not know, and again, I worked in the Waukesha schools as well. Currently over 50% of the students in the school district of Waukesha qualify for free meals. I don't think we've got the economic strength in this community because we serve all needs. But to say again, how nice that we can have the variety. But this is the place to be. Well, and, and we feel very much the same way uh, as far as, when I look at downtown Waukesha, I look at a gem happening there, and I think when I hear what young people want and what we have to compete with in terms of recruiting people for our companies, I don't see why it can't be as good as anything that uh, is attracting people to other urbanized areas. And I look at downtown Waukesha and say, we have, we've got the wine bars, we've got the, uh, Restaurants, we've got activities. Uh, we can continue to grow that. We can have we can, the density can be there, and then those people come in and see how good a community this is, and how good the schools are, and then they'll want to buy the homes, you know, outside of downtown, and that'll keep this community thriving for a long time. And Waukesha can set that example. Yeah, we have other communities in the in the county, quite honestly, that are learning to do the same thing. And I call it revillaging. We need to find our our village again. We need to find that, you know, having a village, having people come together like Friday nights, but doing that on a regular basis. And throughout, when you look at all the assets of Waukesha County, it could happen here, but the city of Waukesha can be, you know, the beacon for that. Yes, sir. I just want to make a complimentary thing to county and city to get this to the flowers and stuff like that. I was just up <laughs> in Minneapolis this last week, and I normally come across the complainer. Uh, but I'll tell you what, they, it is a crap hole up there for snow. And they had a couple inches, and it was still on the ground on the side streets. They don't, they don't use salt. They please get it to our county and city workers. They can do a fantastic job. Uh, I get more. I, I will say it's funny because in a, in a year of light snow, but I get as many compliments on that and just about everything else. And I will contend, and, I, and Larry's heard me say this, that's a big part of public safety. You know, I know that the uh, both Steve and uh, Gavin Jack, you know, the faster we have our roads plowed, the better we have our roads plowed, both for police and fire, EMTs, as well as citizens, the safer everything is. So we, that's why we look at water as safety. We look at the culverts. 
all these things are public safety. We take that very seriously. So I appreciate hearing that. And we do work with our, our municipalities, our communities, so it does look, and hopefully, for most areas of the county, it looks very seamless. That's the real job of county government, like I said, is we're the guys behind it. You know, it's like, hey, does it look seamless? You don't know you went from one to the other? Great, thank you very much, enjoy your day. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's how we are, and we want to maintain that leadership here. Thank you. Thank you.